Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a cited reference search. And this is different from your typical searching where you enter a bunch of keywords and you get some articles back on a particular topic. Cited reference searching is you're really looking at the impact or the influence that an article has had. You're seeing who has cited it since it has been published. And we're going to start by going to the library website. You can see the URL right here. And then we're going to go under search and locate, search the databases. This is a listing of all the databases that we have available. We're going to go ahead and click on W. And then we're going to click on Web of Science. And if you're not in the library, you'll be prompted now to log in, and you just want to use your email address login. Let's go ahead into Web of Science. And you'll see here they call it the Web of Knowledge, and that's kind of the platform. And Web of Science is the database or the resource that we're searching. A couple options, uh, general search, Again, that's what you're probably typical, uh, typically used to. You have your topic, or author, or journal, things like that. Cited reference search is a search for articles that cite an author or a work. Go ahead and t take a look at what that means. Um, you start by entering in a last name, and then their first name initial, and their middle initial. So RW. Uh, so engineering, uh, mechanical engineering professor here. Let's go ahead and do a search, and it comes back with the different hits. We can see here, this is how many, how many times a work has been cited, uh, their author, uh, the name of the journal or uh, resource, the year, volume, page, that kind of information. Um, so this kind of allows us to see, here's everything that he's written that's kind of in the web of science um, environment, and, and that typically is very... Uh, very scholarly, very scientific, the hardcore engineering, the peer-reviewed, really good journals, elite journals, we'll say. And we can kind of see you know, journal fatigue, plasticity, composite material, but this kind of lets us see some of the, uh, I guess, the anomaly in in the academic publishing world. And that's here we have a particular article, this Journal of Composite Technology Research, probably, and uh, we see it's been cited 11 times, published in '94, volume 16, 214. These three below it are close, but not quite. Here they got the year wrong. Here they left out the page. And here they added an extra one there. Now, Web of Science doesn't um, really correct this because they, they publish the, uh, the bibliography however, however it is. You know, so if it's, it's incorrectly published in whatever journal, you know, they don't correct it. They just submit it how it is. So that's kind of a, it shows you how important it is to, you know, cite correctly because you know if you have this citation and you know it's not going to make any sense when we're trying to find that that resource okay so let's go ahead and view the record you know it gives us the basic information uh, the abstract all that information like that and it's telling us that the cited references are 22 and what this means we can go ahead and click on that it's saying that when they wrote this article uh, for the for actually the journal of composites technology and research that there were 22 articles or resources that they cited that they were influenced by when they created this. You know, so this is kind of their bibliography. These are the works that they used. Now, since it was published in 1994, 11 people have cited this. So it's kind of like looking into the future. Um, you know, it was published in 94, and since then, 11 people have used this article, so to speak. And again, we can click on that, and we can see what those articles are. Now, if you're doing a, a literature review or thesis or dissertation, I mean, this is really great resource because it allows you to um, identify like the seminal works, you know, the major works in a field, and you know they're probably highly cited, two, three hundred times, and um, it also allows you to see the direction that research has gone. You know, if you have a really um, a theory-based article, theory-based research. And then you can see once it's been applied, you know, it goes off into the biomedical field in this direction, or thermo this way, or nanoscience in this way. You know, it allows you to kind of see the, that strand or that web, so to speak, of of research and, and, and the direction things have gone. So that's really the the, the key. It's you know, it's, instead of we're really looking for a topic, you're finding out, you know, if you have an article, then there's probably similar articles that have cited it. You know, so it allows you kind of to see
who's connected to who. It's kind of like um, like f uh, social networking, almost like MySpace or Facebook or something like that, where you can kind of see who's connected to who, and that's kind of how this works. We can see basically they would have 11 friends if you want to if you want to take it to that, take it there. But let's go back and look at another example, another professor here at Tech. And uh, he's in biology, and you can see here, here again is his article's been cited 143 times, 113 times, you know, 323 times. You know, so that's kind of a major article. I mean, 300 times it's been cited. Uh, it, allow, it really allows you to kind of see again who's, you know, important works in that field, and then you, it's cool because you can see who has cited it. You know, so that's kind of the the, the gist of cited reference searching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll definitely help you with this, but hopefully this is enough to kind of get you started. Alright?